we are getting started. Hello, everybody. This is MS Office Hours. Uh, it is Thursday, January 12th. We are back for our first installment here in 2023. It took a lot of energy for many of us to actually make it into this call. But we're very excited. We have Jessica Wilczek with us today. She is going to talk to us about a specific meeting template in Teams. And uh, she was informed that this group gives exhaustive feedback and has lots of opinions. So after Jessica shares with us, hopefully you will share your opinions with her. So we, oh, sorry. And also I'm Heather Cox <laughs> with me today. Are? Hey, I'm Garrett Chandler. And I'm Andrea Singrio. And clearly we are just getting back into the swing of things. So Jessica, we will turn it over to you and we'll turn our mics and cameras off. Sounds great. Thanks, Heather. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Jessica. I am a product manager on the Microsoft Teams team uh, working on the virtual appointments team. And so I'm here to talk to you all today about um, the virtual appointment teams meeting template and uh, get your feedback on it, um, what you think about it, how do you think you would use it, and any feedback on features you'd be interested in seeing as you kind of develop this. So um, Presentations pulling up right now. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, first just kind of go through the whole suite of products that we call um, virtual appointments and then go through uh, the specific new feature itself, that virtual appointment meeting type. Um, and then we can go um, and get your feedback and everything. Um, so, yeah, uh, let me know. Just shout if you can't see the presentation, but we'll go ahead and uh, kick off. OK, so um, so virtual appointments, um, if you're unfamiliar with this, is um, essentially a set of products that's um, meant to help with any sort of uh, teams meetings and communications that you're having with people um, outside of your organization or that um, may not be using teams to join meetings. And so these could be your customers, clients, um, any anybody that you serve. Um, and so it's really focused on everything that we build as a part of virtual appointments is um, meant to really cover these kind of three areas that you see here, which is um, improved customer experiences, making sure we um, we cover any poor customer experiences that um, are experienced by login issues, join issues, people forgetting they have meetings, not sure where to go, when it is, when to fill out forms, things like that. Um, we also know that scheduling and management of meetings and appointments can be difficult um, and there's not a lot of integration between platforms and um, and with those people that you're meeting with. And sometimes it can be challenging to track the success of your meetings, um, who's showing up, any analytics or insights. And so virtual appointments kind of sits in this space to address some of these things um, really around what we call like B2C business to consumer meeting types um, across your organization. Um, I will cover the um, piece on Teams Premium in just a moment. Um, some animations here. Um, uh, when we think about virtual appointments, just again to kind of set your mind on the type of scenarios we're looking at. Um, it, again, it's really any sort of like a business to consumer when you're meeting with someone from outside of your organization. So um, some kind of general scenarios we have here are something like any sort of like healthcare, telehealth appointment, therapy session. It could be a financial consultation, a virtual fitting or showcasing a product. It could be sales calls. Um, or that something that may be more relevant to this group would be anything from, um, you know, inner HR interviews, uh, informationals, office hours, um, anything of the sort. So it's kind of a whole slew of things and it can be used and molded to whatever the, the scenario is that you're using it for. Um, so it's um, kind of a one stop shop for those B2C meetings. Um, just to show you what we're, um, as we kind of think about virtual appointments in the context of Teams Premium, um, I won't spend too much time on this, but we can go over it if there are any questions. Um, but 
uh, virtual appointments is uh, both a base has both basic and premium features associated with it. And so um, we have our basic apps and experiences, which will include like the bookings app, the virtual appointments app um, and our virtual appointment meeting template that all have like a basic experience that's available to anyone with an M365 license. And um, it has a, a set of like basic capabilities for these types of meetings. And then if you do have a Teams premium license, then we'll be introducing uh, some of these premium features layered on top of it uh, if you have some needs for those scenarios. Um, and I know it was touched on earlier in this call, but um, we can also go through some of the needs there and, um, and talk through what the differences may end up being um, for EDU for these premium features. Um, but uh, but the meeting template mostly will have um, a lot of good basic features and then again just some of those extra premium on top of it. Cool. Um, so uh, just to before we jump into a quick product demo, um, just to kind of get you grounded, some of y'all may be familiar with the bookings app or the virtual appointments app. These are all kind of within the virtual appointment product suite, and so I know it can be a little bit confusing to think about it. But um, the way I like to kind of tee it up is you can think about it as um, is like how much kind of customization and how and what volume of appointments that you need and then what app you want to choose for that. And so um, what I'll talk to you all about today is the virtual appointment meeting type in Teams, which is really meant to be super lightweight for the people that are like, I don't want to learn any new tools. I don't want to use another app. I just want this to be super integrated and, um, you know, have this kind of all in one place for these B2C meetings meeting types. Um, if you want, if you're doing these types of meetings at scale, you want more customization, you want the like scheduling power of something more than just the team's calendar scheduling, then you'll move more into like the bookings app territory there where we have um, a lot of robust scheduling tools. Um, and then if you want to even take it a step further and have access to um, to APIs, to advanced analytics, um, some of our queuing systems where you can see who's who's in a waiting room, see who's joined a call. If you're kind of managing, um, you know, a lot of appointments at once, then you'll use the virtual appointments app. And so it's kind of a, a, a tiered system where they're, they're integrated together. But um, what we'll be talking about today is that virtual appointment meeting type. Um, which again is meant to be really lightweight. Um, you don't need the bookings app or the virtual appointments app to access this. It's meant to be completely standalone um, so that it makes um, scheduling super easy. Awesome. Okay, now um, I'll go through uh, what the product actually is, uh, which you're probably looking forward to, and then we'll we'll go to the feedback piece. Um, so the virtual appointment meeting type is going to be uh, this uh, is rolling out right now and um, we'll be rolling out to ED rolling out to edu um in in a little while so we're still kind of working on that piece but it's going to be categorized as a meeting template which is going to be accessible from the team's calendar through this drop down menu um it's going to look and feel like a team's meeting with um, a slightly customized and tailored scheduling form so you open it up like a normal team's meeting you fill out this form um, and so for the person who's organizing the meeting, it's going to feel just like a normal Teams meeting, um, except we have an area for you to specify who those external guest users are that are joining the appointment. Um, and when you actually send that invitation for them, they will get this, um, this super tailored uh, external join experience. So um, we've heard a lot of folks say that like, yeah, I love Teams and I use it internally, but it's really hard for other people to join Teams meetings. They don't understand it. They're not familiar with it. Maybe they have challenges knowing when their appointment is or logging on. And so this is meant to kind of solve those problems where you can still use Teams, but um, that person who is getting that meeting invitation, they'll get like a tailored meeting invitation, a quick join button so they, they don't miss their appointment. Um, we have email reminders. As a part of premium, we'll be introducing SMS reminders so they never miss that appointment. Um, and then they get they can join from uh, a web browser. They don't need to download Teams. They don't need the app at all. They just join from their mobile phone or their um, desktop uh, web browser and they enter a much more tailored waiting room experience where they can communicate with whoever is leading that meeting and then join um, all in one. And so um, I'll show you the um, the demo video and then um, I'll come back to some of these questions and get feedback from you all. So this is just a couple minute video on the flow.
All right, so that's the kind of end to end um, experience. Um, it's nice to be the, the product manager for a product because then you get to be featured in your own demo videos. So that's fun. Um, but I just wanted a, to see what y'all's initial thoughts are on this. Um, I, I see some questions in the chat, which I can go through and answer first. But um, what I'd like to hear is just like how you're kind of thinking about this, um, this meeting type. Um, do you see yourself using it? What scenarios would you see yourself using it in? Um, and then what kind of features stand out to you? Or if you think there's any new ones that kind of come to mind? Um, and so uh, just to cover some of the initial questions, um, uh, let's see, um, how is this different from scheduling a Teams meeting? Um, just to clarify, the, the Teams meeting templates are something that's kind of rolling out broadly across Microsoft. We're introducing new, what we call Teams meeting templates, which allow IT admins to customize these meeting options on that right-hand pane um, for different meeting types. And then we also have different, um, you know, different capabilities that we're introducing with these meeting templates. And so this is meant to be like a new Teams meeting type, this virtual appointment. So it's to kind of sit alongside there and be as simple as scheduling a Teams meeting where you can just go through the Teams flow, add it to your calendar, nothing nothing new um, from what that flow looks like. Um, but it's really that external user that's getting that um, much more streamlined uh, approach and meeting type. Um, so it's meant to kind of elevate that experience. Um, it's while it is, we do support virtual appointment flows and bookings, I see that as a question, this is not attached to bookings. So if you disable bookings for your organization, um, you can still you can still experience this flow. It's not connected to the bookings app in any way. Um, bookings does use some of the some of that like the web browser join and waiting room lobby and stuff like that. Um, so it shares the same technology, but bookings is kind of like a, an added on um, with more capabilities. Cool. Awesome. Um, and this is, uh, I, I see some questions around like where recordings are stored. This is um, going to be uh, the same as other Teams meetings. So you can manage it alongside other Teams meetings, see, um, see, some, see it as like a meeting type um, when you're looking at um, meeting data. And that's also where like recordings will be stored and all of that. So um, it can be interacted with um, from that uh, scheduler's perspective as a normal Teams meeting would. So um, I'm curious, do y'all have any thoughts on like what scenarios you would you would use this meeting type for? Like, do you see yourself going and, and scheduling this meeting type? Um, do you think it would be useful to you? I see some people um, saying that it'd be good for like interviews, clinics, HR. Yeah, office hours, things like that. Feel free to raise your hand or come off of mute if you want to explain further than just what you might have dropped in the chat. I know you guys like to talk. That's why we told Jessica you would give information. Yeah, Scott. Uh, so hopefully you can hear me. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, I think this is very helpful. It, it helps explain the insanity of these various versions. I'm just one. I mean, like I can think of lots of scenarios for this. I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to explain this to users. Right. I have 160,000 people. I need to explain this difference between booking the virtual appointment they don't have access to and the virtual appointment they do have access to. And I'm 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 starting to wonder maybe there's particular targeted scenarios we can explain to people. This is the road you follow to get there. But um, that's the one main feedback is. This is a very complicated roll road uh, through an overlapping feature set. Yeah. And I, I'm not quite, I'm not quite grasping the guidance I need to give to people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it's great feedback, and we are um, we're still working on how we can kind of tie all of these products in in a way where. It's clear how they're connected, um, but people don't feel like they have to use all of the products to get those capabilities. Um, what we're hoping to land with this, uh, we have we have some like first round experience kind of coach mark that we're working on for this. So if I'll just mute it. Um, 
see. We have, um, we'll have like a kind of a, this like modal that'll pop up to show people like what this is about. And we're also introducing um, some kind of like progressive coach marks to show what each of those fields are. Um, but we also have been exploring like what it would look like to actually give people a preview of what this experience would be. Um, so uh, I don't know if that would also help just so people kind of know what, what they're getting out of this meeting type. We're hoping that will help. Um, and this is really meant to be more attached to teams rather than the bookings experience. Um, but I and so it's it's meant to at least be like kind of self discoverable in that way. But it's good feedback in terms of how we can sharpen up how it's all kind of connected to each other. Um, do you think it would be helpful to have more of a connection in the flow like or like in the in the meeting type to show how it's connected to the virtual appointments app or the bookings app? Or is it just more in terms of like our documentation and how we um, and how we kind of link them together from a product perspective? Yeah, because I mean, because until this presentation here, I thought this was all getting taken away. So we had been we had been busy selling people on like the queue stuff, which I guess is getting taken away. But <laughs> the you know where people could have like a a pool of advisors waiting for people. Yeah. Uh, so we have our pool of tech support or pool of help desk. Um, so that looks like it's definitely going to premium if I'm understanding this correct. But this is really helpful for those kind of like somewhere between bookings and uh, like more probably individual users. This is probably more like my bookings yes. kind of territory. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a good it's a good call out. And if any of y'all have other have other thoughts on just like feedback around either the confusion or what would be helpful, the way that we're thinking about this is that this is more a yeah for personal like ad hoc meetings um, where it's really like you don't want you don't need the that kind of like the robust features that a whole app provides you. You just you know want to okay I have to schedule an interview with someone or I'm meeting with you know like a donor or a client or a um you know a sales lead i want to just schedule a friendly meeting with them then i can just do it as though i'm scheduling a normal teams meeting whereas if you're doing this at scale with a lot of people you would go into the virtual appointments app and that would be what you schedule using which is where things like the queue the scheduled and on-demand queue live um which is part of that premium suite um so we we are working through kind of how to connect those two um but yeah if y'all have any other comments feel free to to add to that point as well. It's Marge, well. you're next. Um, a couple of comments. One is nasty name confusion. Um, so with two things that sort of sound like virtual appointment, uh, it needs a different name. Um, and the other comment is, I think it's going to be useful and, and it's in the, and you'll see it in the chat, I think it's going to be useful if it's integrated in with some major projects, uh, products, for example, Epic uh, was mentioned, Cerner was mentioned. Um, it'd be nice if it, those kinds of things. Uh, but also it's, in some ways it could be a Zoom replacement for when people use Zoom here instead of using Teams uh, when they need, yes, yeah, Zoom does have Epic. Um, uh, when people go, Teams is too hard for me, um, kind of reaction for any of those people who would say, well, I, I understand Zoom, but I, I can't seem to understand Teams. That That's my takeaway from, from listening to her. Mm -hmm. um, and can you uh, expand more on that first comment about the virtual appointments name? Are you just saying that it's confusing because we have other products called virtual appointments? Or do you think that yes. the virtual appointment name is not indicative of like what it's well, not, or not intuitive? You showed three items. Two had very similar names. Bookings mm -hmm. was the one that didn't. Yeah. Um, so right off the bat, how do I explain to IT folks and non-IT folks which to use? It's sort of playing off the original comments that were made about how do I explain yeah. the differences? So your chart was great, but with two things with similar names, it's it's it won't last mm -hmm. because the explanation won't hold up um people are going to be chronically confused mm -hmm. um i and it probably also needs a, a catchy 
short name rather than long. Yeah. Um, I hope that helps. Yes, very helpful. Thank you. All right, Velvet. Um, yeah, I agree because aren't all team meetings virtual appointments anyways? Um, it, it, I, I think a, a completely different name um, would be useful to distinguish it away from a normal team meeting. And I'm also curious, you know, if you use virtual appointment, is, did, will this provide a added, you know, synchronous meeting features that's not provided in other um, in a normal Teams meeting? Uh, what, what's the major benefit uh, as far as functionality when, when you join um, between this and another meeting? Or maybe there should be to, for people to say, oh, yeah, I'm going to, you know, create a virtual appointment because of these added features. Um, otherwise, you know, I have a f for I have a feeling it just doesn't distinguish itself enough from a normal Teams meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's great feedback, and I think um, yeah, some other feedback that we heard as well in terms of like people just understanding how this would be different. Um, do you have any feedback for or thoughts on um, other features that you would want to distinguish it from a normal Teams meeting, like things like those SMS notifications, for instance, or um, like a branded waiting room, anything like that? Yeah, that would be great. Um, oh, gosh, I'm on the spot. Um, oh, no, I, but, yeah, it's OK if nothing comes to mind right now. Yeah, but Joel disagrees with me, so it'd be great to to hear what what he thinks. Um, because I, I would like to hear other people's opinions. Just for yeah. me right now, I, I'm not seeing a big, big, big difference between. I'll tell you, I think it solves a huge problem that we've had for years, which is that people got really comfortable with the other product that everyone keeps mentioning, <laughs> uh, because it was so easy to join, and Teams meetings were just too hard for people to join from a mobile device because they had to download the app. And so this this solves that. Ah, I see. I see. So you you like it, the ease of joining mostly. That's that's pretty much all. I mean, that's the main selling okay. point, I think. Yeah. I well, I would I would kind of also say why can't a normal Teams meeting be easy to join then? <laughs> why do we have to use this? um to get our guests to join easier um you know maybe yeah. this could be a, a feature that should be standardized across just teams platform period yeah that's a great yeah great point on um, on both counts and um yeah and so this is great feedback for us to just take to see how we can kind of expand these features and make it more clear how this is connected um and see we have a couple more hands up a couple more minutes left so i think francisco uh, it's so funny because though that came upon that uh, thought, that's what I was holding. That's what I was going to say is uh, the reduced friction in joining meetings via mobile is like the awesomest selling point. Um, so many times, uh, you know, we do have meetings with external with external customers or external business partners or mm -hmm. vendors or parents or whatever constituency group we have that are not core that, that don't have identities within our environment. And yes, absolutely. Like it feels like uh, they're second class citizens because folks are, you know, mobile is the easiest uh, platform to join from. They got the appointment on their, you know, on their mobile email. They want to click and all of a sudden, you know, they're being prompted to install a client and that becomes uh, cumbersome. And so reducing the friction uh, is a fantastic, that's like the biggest selling point. And I think if you emphasize that, um, I think that'll make it much more clear what this product is intended for and bringing that reduced friction to teams meetings in general, even if it's for folks within our own environment, you know, folks that do have identities in our tenant, uh, you know, not necessarily having uh, requiring the team's client to join a meeting that you're invited to because, you know, we have some uh, we are religious education and sometimes we have older older participants and uh, you know, walking someone, having an important meeting and trying to get someone to join when they're on their mobile and, and uh, just anything to reduce the friction to joining. Um, and that specific feature with virtual appointments is a real slam dunk. <laughs> 
Awesome. Well, awesome. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Jessica, for coming mm -hmm. on today. Yeah, oh, thank you. This is great. I appreciate it. Yes. Thank you, everybody. We knew you'd give honest feedback. We know that <laughs> how this group rolls. So thank you for doing that. And uh, we are looking forward to seeing everybody again next week. If you have additional questions, drop them in the chat and let us know there. But, and the, uh, you know, for the sake of time, we'll go ahead and stop the recording.